Everyone asks me, what editing software should I get? I want to start editing. Dude, Lightroom Mobile is free, has pretty much every single tool that the paid version, $20 a month, has, and it's on your phone, so it comes with you everywhere you go. Lightroom Mobile Masterclass, baby. Let's do it. What's up guys, my name is Zach Brule and this is my masterclass. Just kidding, but we're gonna get into Lightroom Mobile, pretty much every single tool in this crazy app that literally, I can't stress enough how good it is. So Lightroom Mobile, download it now and follow along. We're gonna show you every single tool, how to use them. Let's get into it. So we're here in the phone. We're gonna run down to the good old Lightroom. Lightroom Mobile, if you haven't downloaded, download it and make your account. It's your Adobe ID. You can get one for free, but this is pretty much what you're gonna get into and you're gonna be like, what the hell? You're not gonna be like, what the hell? Because you have me. So we're gonna go here, all photos. This is pretty much where your photos will be kept. As you can see, I've imported a couple. They're organized by date. If you wanna add photos, you can either take a photo with the little take a photo button Bang, super cool selfie. Uh, oh, there you go, I got imported. Or you can press the plus button and you can come here and you can choose, you know, device folders. I don't really have anything on my phone at the moment. So we're just gonna go with this nice selfie that I just took. We're gonna pause that because we don't want it syncing right now. What it's doing is, is trying to sync with the desktop version of Lightroom. If you don't have the desktop version, this won't be an issue for you. So don't worry about that. But pretty much we're gonna come here, we're gonna see the photo and then down here is pretty much where all the tools are. So let's start. Selective edits, selective edits. You can press the plus button here and you can make selective edits. So as you can see here, I can make a shape around my face. Then I want to come to light and I'm going to expose my face. If you don't understand what this does, it's kind of simple. It's pretty much adding exposure to your face and you can you can hold tap to hold and you can delete it too. But you have the choice of either a, a, a circle, a brush, which you can choose select wherever you want or a great or a, they call this a gradient where it does kind of half the photo and has a little dispersion. This is great for like changing the color of the sky, things like that. Then down here you have all, all the things you can change about it. We're going to get into that a little later because they're going reappear down the side here healing this is pretty much if you want to remove certain things from my face I will say one thing on the phone is it's, it's hard to kind of navigate it you have to use two fingers but let's say look I found an ugly pimple we're gonna remove the pimple you can either press the healing or clone I know the clone takes another part of the image and puts it in replacement and the brush I think just does kind of like an AI version of it but we're gonna go here if you want to change the size of your brush by the way all you have to do is hold this little thing here and you can go up or down you can also change the feather of it how hard or how soft it is. We're gonna make this smaller here. And all you have to do, tap, bang, gone. You see, no more pimple. So like, it's crazy. You see, this is done in a freaking on a phone. This is insane. We're gonna go into cropping now. As you can see, cropping, everyone knows what cropping does. Original, you can change all the sizes. If you're going Instagram, people don't know this, but four by five is the one you're gonna wanna go for. That's the maximum size um, for Instagram. You can also go for a one by one square. You can go for custom. You know how to crop things. If you're going for a story, you're gonna wanna go for nine by 16. So there, now I can post this on my story. You can also here, you can straighten the image. If you just press strain, it'll automatically look at the horizons. For example, it's looking at this horizon back here and it'll straighten it this is great for you know if your, your photo is not completely straight but you have to do you do have to be aware you are losing parts of the image because as you can see now I can't drop out as much rotate as well if you want to rotate the image flip you know you just have all these tools in a phone it's I'm deleting Lightroom desktop now I, I'm done paying for it I have all this stuff here you can even edit raw photos if you know, if you don't know what that is but we're gonna move on people don't know a lot about profiles but they're like presets actually you can come here and you can choose pretty much there's a bunch of their preset profiles vintage model the thing about profiles is you can choose the intensity with presets you can't do that so it's like in LUTs if you edit it in Premiere Pro you can choose the intensity of the LUT how much you want it to be applied um the presets you can't do that but with profiles you can do that profiles are great if you just want to get a quick edit on and you don't have any presets saved there's a bunch of ones ready for you auto you see this button right here if you are a complete beginner or you know if you just want to get quick edits bang auto fixes the exposure for you it doesn't work always I'm just gonna press the, the back one it's up at the top there now getting into the good stuff Stuff. light this is pretty much your exposure your tone control exposure you know that's how bright or dark the image is contrast is gonna make your lights lighter and your darks darker guys remember this stuff you can dang and bang they're a nice looking contrast seat image we're not gonna add that much contrast before I explain highlights and shadows I like to go to whites and black whites and blacks are gonna take the brightest 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 parts of the image and the darkest darkest parts of the image darks for blacks whites for light pretty much gonna make them either darker or or brighter so as you can see here the darkest parts of the image are around like under my hair here so when I put the darks down that's what's gonna get darker 
Same with whites here. The, the brightest is probably in the top left, that light there. So that's pretty much what you can do. And shadows are the same, but they're not as, as bright. It's the same kind of idea there, bringing down the highlights is going to make those brights not as bright. Bringing up the highlights is going to make those brights brighter. We're going to explain this on the tone curve. The tone curve is a left to right kind of curve, as you can see here. Left is the darks, right is the brights. So the top left here is your whites, as you can see. The whites, bang, all those whites are getting super bright. All those whites are getting super dark until it gets black. This here, if you're going to the right, you're making your darks darker, and if you're going up, you're making your brights brighter. If I come to around here, this is what's gonna be affecting my shadows because it's not the darkest parts of the image, but it's a pretty dark parts of the image. Same up here with my highlights, and then here is my mid-tone. So if I just wanna make the mid-tones of the image a little brighter, mid-tones are the tones that are kind of like in the general, not super bright, not super dark. I can play with that there. So that's the tone curve. Gives you all this sorts of control over your image. Moving on to color. Color pretty much, white balance is gonna be what is true white in your image. The white balance in this image is actually pretty good because the colors are not all off but if you want to change your white balance what I recommend is take this eyedropper tool then you can come here and you can choose something that should be true white for example this door bang hit yes and it does all the corrections for you you can change your temperature and your tint temperature is going to be the temperature of your image if you want it colder or darker colder is going to make it more blue darker sorry warmer is going to make it more yellow and tint the same is going to make more pink and green you have to do your research on exactly how that works I just like to use the eyedropper tool saturation vibrant saturation we know is just going to make everything more saturated what vibrance does is it makes the most saturated colors more saturated so this green for example here is going to get real saturated this purple in my eyes this red on my thing is going to get real saturated but you know it's not really going to affect the saturation of the uh the door over there. pardon me now if we move up here we got black and white that you can change it to black and white if you want your image to be black and white or you can change your mix mix is actually a great oh my eye the mix is great because it lets you change certain colors so let's say this green here you want to change it so we're going to come to the green colors as you can see there's eight main colors up here so we're going to cut the green now you can change the hue of this green as you can see my shirt oh we're gonna make this shirt yellow now you change the saturation which is how saturated the shirt is not saturated very saturated and you can change the luminance how bright it is super bright not bright now this tool here is great the um select adjustment brush you can click on that and now you can select a part of your image and you change whatever setting you have for example here i want to make this whole thing brighter it's going to take not only the green but there's also a bit of yellow in that green shirt let's say i want to make this more saturated now it's going to take both the yellow and the green they're going to saturate it i want to change the hue of this shirt Bang, I can change the hue. Now we're gonna change this down. Now I'm gonna to come to the hue and I wanna change the hue of the headband. Now I can bring the hue up or down and make more purple or red. And there you go, it just lets you completely change the image. As you can see, like it's completely different than when I started. I have a, a yellow shirt now and a, and a brownish red headband. But we're gonna move on. Texture is a texture in your image. All the little details are gonna be a lot more prominent if you add some texture, as you can see. Mm, my hairs are, are very detailed. Clarity is kind of the same thing. Clarity, I kinda, I kinda, contrast kind of tool. Dehaze is your image just hazy. You can't really see everything super clearly. It's not super sharp like you shoot through a cloud kind of thing. You're gonna add a dehaze. It's gonna just unhaze the image. Vignetting, people know what vignetting is. It brings the sides into a, a nice dark contour or a nice white one and then down here you have all your controls for that. Finally at the bottom, grain amount. I like to add a little bit of grain to my images. Adds a little more character. Don't overdo it unless you're trying to go for that whole vintage look. You have also your controls there for if you want to make your grain bigger, if you want to make your grain more rough moving on to sharpening sharpening is pretty much going to sharpen the image if we do add sharpening i can tell you what these do radius is going to add more size to the, the the sharpness pieces moving on to detail going to add more of the sharpening i usually leave those at the default masking what masking does is it only sharpens the contours of the image anything flat like example this is the same tone here on my face going to remove the sharpening from that and it's only going to leave sharpening on for example my lips here because that's a difference in the tone i usually add a lot of masking i, I don't want my face sharp. I want my face nice and smooth. Smooth, soft skin, baby. Color noise reduction. I usually add a bit of that because most images do have color noise. Moving on, optics. Chromatic aberration and lens profile correction. What this is, is most lenses create a little chromatic aberration around the rims, which is when the pixels are split, the red, blue, and green pixels are split. So that's a good thing to add, remove chromatic aberration. Lens profile is it's gonna fix the lens correction because lenses have distortion. But you have to manually add your lens profile so I can search up, uh, you know, make, this would be a, an Android phone and you can search the exact. Moving on, the final thing here, geometry. This is gonna let you change the perspective of the image. So if you have buildings that are, you know, not straight, usually great in architecture or photography. I usually go for guided and add these lines here. You would line up your buildings with these lines and it, it, it would fix the 
image itself. I'll show you an example on screen. I saw a great video. I'm gonna link it in the description on how to use these transform features. Finally, you got your user presets, but when you finish your edit, you can save a preset and press these little three things and press create presets. It's gonna take the edits you have made on that particular image, save it as a preset. You can even manage presets. You can remove the preset ones that they give you. You can remove your presets if you don't want your presets there. I don't know why you want your presets there. You can also reset here. You can reset adjustments. You can reset all your adjustments. You can reset two imports. So when you imported it, it's gonna bring it back to how it looks. Share here, this is where you're gonna be able to export your image. You can either share it to whatever thing you want, you know, Instagram, Facebook, or you can save it to your device. Press save to device. Add to, you can add to collections. I'll show you that in a moment. You can show your histogram, which is gonna show all the pixels on your image. You can show info, you know, images about, info about the images. Create a preset. You can copy the settings that you have on the image to paste it on to another. You can delete the image. Now let's move on. They call them albums here, but you can create a new album or create a new folder. I'm gonna create an album here, for example, this is going to be just the date and your album is empty add photos and videos or import new ones so i'm going to come here i'm going to choose this add two and then you can choose your album and bang now let's say i want to put all my selfies in here then i can quickly access all my selfies we're going to delete the album folder is like your albums in the folders and you can put folders in folders but you can't put folders in albums so you use your folders for your main ones and then your albums will be a uh, smaller smaller collections deleted if you have deleted anything you can come back and recover it if you use the desktop version there's a feature that lets you analyze people's faces and you can sort the people so it's super good in collaboration with the desktop there's also a lot of uh, things on the main page here where you can learn super fun super fun stuff that is pretty much the basics of it that's how to edit in lightroom here are some of my best shots that i have taken on the phone and edited in lightroom just to show you the possibilities of Lightroom Mobile. No, I'm telling you, even if you're not a photographer, learn to use Lightroom Mobile. Question of the day for you guys, do you have Lightroom Mobile already? If you do, um, what is your favorite tool to use in Lightroom Mobile? I'm very curious. There's a lot of fun tools. Comment your is below. Gently tap that like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe, new videos every week. Hit that notification bell if you wanna be notified every time I drop a video. Creators, keep creating. See you guys in the next one. I'm, I'm not gonna be a photographer, I'm becoming a musician. Peace.